They're going to shoot me. It was the largest eruption ever recorded by man, which killed more than 9,000 people, covering them with almost 40 feet of lava. How many kids do you have? Two alive. Two gone. My name is Giuseppe, and I have a mission. To travel the world, to meet the most extraordinary people on the planet, and to ask them a simple question. What does happiness mean to you? Welcome to Project Happiness. I hate driving. I never drive. Yet, here I am, driving for hundreds of miles in this van, in one of the most isolated and inaccessible countries. But it's for a good cause. I'm going to meet people who have decided to live in total solitude, immersed in the wilderness, and figure out what makes them happy. Maybe I'll discover a new ingredient for my recipe for happiness. Besides, driving in Iceland is not so bad. Everywhere you turn, there's something incredible, like that mountain, which was the inspiration for the setting of Jules Verne's novel, Journey to the Center of the Earth. He wrote the novel with that mountain in mind. Crazy. I had never visited Iceland until today, and what I see from the window is breathtaking. Here the landscapes change so quickly and drastically that they seem like different planets side by side. Black ash deserts, majestic waterfalls, endless expanses of moss, geysers, lava, icebergs and glaciers. It's no coincidence that this island is called the land of ice and fire. What makes this natural spectacle so extraordinary is that it has never been changed by mankind. It has been this way since time began. With just 366,000 inhabitants, Iceland has one of the lowest population densities. That's why I think I'm in the right place to search for the world's most isolated homes and learn how happiness can be found in solitude. <sighs> Better leave the car here or we might scare him away. Ding dong. <laughs> there are no doorbells anywhere here because all the farms are totally isolated. Just a sign that says, do not enter. It seems like no one is here. But it makes sense because it's a farm. Usually farmers work all day during the summer. It's the only time of the year where they can harvest grass for the animals. Perhaps he's working at this very moment. Let's find out. What a nice welcome. A deer skull hanging there. Hello? Hello? Should I knock? Why am I afraid? These curtains make me anxious. You can't see who's inside, but they can see you. If you think about it, these people live alone, year-round and completely isolated. They could be anyone. Hello? It's a nice house, though. What's a sight? Look at that view. Crazy. Perhaps finding the most isolated people in Iceland might be more difficult than I thought. It may be the case that all the houses are empty because they're off working. Who knows? Let's see. Hello? These Icelandic doorbells? Oh. The radio is on. Nothing. Let's go. This is perfect. But they're gonna shoot me. I don't even know where the front door is. I'll try the barn. No dice. I will be honest. I underestimated this mission. I thought finding someone to talk to would have been much easier. But if they decided to live in isolation, there must be a reason. No luck. A very sweet old couple. 
but they don't speak English, nothing. But I'm hell-bent on returning home with the Icelandic ingredient for happiness, and I will not waste a single second. This is an ancient house from the Viking era. It still has a peat roof, which keeps the heat inside making it livable, even during the harshest winters. My guess is that the sheep are there because they go in at night to warm themselves up. I can't tell if it's a real sheep or not. It's so still. Was it? Oh, no, it's real. Let's see the inside. Look at the ceiling. Here you can see the peat. This insulation maintains the internal temperature. It is very deep. Wait, wait. Look at that. It's a cave. Crazy. I see something at the end. They're gnomes. They're gnomes. Do you know what this means? This cave is sacred. Because here in Iceland, everyone believes in the wee folk. Elves and trolls that protect them and their territory so they are worshipped. And surely they were put here to protect this cave. Sesto San Giovanni, my hometown, is definitely beautiful. The most beautiful in the world, but waking up in front of Skogafoss waterfall isn't bad. Now I'll rinse my face and resume the journey to meet the most isolated people in Iceland. We'll see what they have to teach us. There should be people because there are cars. Basically here, every farm is home to a family. Each farm is equivalent to a family. And they try to work all summer and set aside the entire harvest for the winter. I see some little girls playing. This family agreed to have a chat with me. What's your name? Anna. Anna. Okay, Anna speaks English, so he's gonna help me to translate. And you have always lived like that? You have always lived here? Yeah. You were born here? Yeah. yeah? Okay, cool. And I always ask to the people, like, what makes them happy? And what do you think is happiness in a place like this? Like, so you can say it in, uh, in Icelandish. Icelandic. Icelandic, if you want. The animals and the nature. Yes. The animals and the nature makes you, makes you happy. And yeah, your family. And your family. Cool, cool, cool. What about you? Just staying here with the animals. And you too? Yeah. Thank you so much, guys. It was, uh, it was a pleasure. You helped me a lot, and I, I, I really thank you because I know you were you were working. So thank you so much, and thank you to translate. Yeah. No okay. Bye bye. That was hard because the dad was super closed off, so I couldn't ask him much. We will try someone else. I understood from this that. Isolated people are not used to talking to others. I've understood that very clearly. They were very nice and kind though. And we'll keep going around the fjords that, that go on in that direction. The view is insanely breathtaking. Hopefully we'll find someone who will open up a little more. It was a really tough interview for me. But it can't go right all the time. I often create expectations for the answers I would like to receive. Perhaps some answers at first glance I find trivial, but they actually contain more than meets the eye. The answer that the father gave me gets straight to the essence of life. Exactly how he has decided to live his life, only with what is essential and necessary.
It is very difficult to drive in Iceland. Things outside the window distract you. You don't know where to look. That is the Vatnajökull glacier, the largest in all of Europe. It's about the size of the state of Delaware. I should look at the road. I'm distracted, but there's nobody else on the road. On the way, I encounter small, isolated villages. I take every opportunity to ask people for information, but I keep getting back the same response. You need to go further north, towards the eastern fjords. I'm going to that bar to ask for information, because finding a person nearby who lives alone, it's not looking good. What a sunny little town. And this is summer. Just think of the winter. But let's hope that maybe the bartender knows something. Are you staying here? Hey, how are you doing? Um, let's see if you can help me. I'm doing a reportage about happiness. I want to meet people who live isolated and interview them to see how they are happy but I'm not finding anyone. Yeah. Do you know by any chance someone? Uh, so I don't know anyone personally, but if you go uh, like go into the fjords, then maybe you'll find somebody. So I have to go further? Yeah. Far, okay. Cool, okay. Thank you very much. Bye bye. No. She doesn't know anyone either. It is definitely not the most touristy area of Iceland, also because it's just black sand and wind. This is precisely what fascinates me, desolation. Here under 40 feet of soil, which is actually lava, hides the history of Iceland. Something that teaches me that nature reigns supreme here. From that volcano there, which is called Laki, there was the largest eruption ever recorded by man, which killed more than 9,000 people, covering them with almost 40 feet of lava. And that makes me reflect a bit. It makes me think that maybe in Iceland, you don't decide where to live. And you live where you can. And maybe the people I'm going to meet, who live isolated from everything, did not choose to, but it was necessary to live, to survive. It's nature that has decided to live here. Until now, I had not considered the consequences of an isolated life. Hi. Many Icelandic people take like some medicine for depression. Ah, okay. Yeah. You think it's for the weather? No, I don't think. Loneliness. I don't think it's the weather. Maybe it's has something to do with the light or you know yes yes but you feel lonely in the winter sometimes yeah yeah you should be used to it because you you grew up yeah maybe in this uh... <laughs> maybe, <laughs> no no it's, 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 it's something you don't get used to sometimes you really really want to see somebody that's what the farm what i was saying if you're going to bali there's one farm which is isolated and that's the the bad things happen. Bye bye, thank you so much, I appreciate it. Bye bye, bye bye, bye. thank you, bye bye. Interesting, they gave me a new insight, a new point of view. Icelanders are not used to this loneliness either. So they told me to go that way and to skip a farm because a lady's son and husband just committed suicide. So we won't go and talk to them. There are actually many suicides here. 
In fact, the guy who is the manager of this small hotel, he asked me, why did you come to Iceland in search of happiness? There are a lot of depressed people here. And the lady told me that many people take medicine. It's interesting to find out if, in the places where happiness seems absent, maybe there is something we aren't considering. And that's what I'm looking for. I'm on my way to meet um, a sculptor who lives alone in the fjords, very isolated, and makes statues from whale skeletons. I was advised to talk to him since he's a very special person and he's very well known among the locals here. And they said he might have an interesting view on happiness. Let's go take a look. His name is Free Willy. Like the movie Free Willy. Look at that. Maybe you should stay back a bit. Uh, I mean, I, th I wouldn't want to intimidate him right away. What a sight. Beautiful. Hello? This way, I hear whistling. Hello? Should I go in? Hi, Free Willy. Free Willy. Hi. How are you doing? Okay. How are you today? All good. All good. Very good. Very good. Very nice to meet you. Okay, man. Giuseppe. Yeah. I'm All good? I'm <laughs> Free Willy's house is a workshop and a museum. He carves bones from the beached orcas he finds on the black beaches of the eastern fjords. His mission is to give voice to the spirit of these symbolic animals, wearing them as talismans. His welcoming and lively gaze, however, hides a story worth listening to. Free Willy, how old are you? I don't know. I stopped counting when I was 60. Ah, okay. So maybe 61. <laughs> wow. You, you know this is a greenhouse? Uh, I don't have any plants there. These are going away. So yeah. in my greenhouse is uh, bones. Yeah. And the sun makes the bone white. Uh, the sun is the magic. She makes everything or she destroys everything. Here can you see the shoulder blade of orca? Wow, you know that I've never seen a, a orca skeleton in my life. You can see he has a destroyed teeth. Yeah, can you touch? Yeah, yeah. If they get demons teeth, the vision will go down because they are seeing with a jawbone. Wow. How? How is it possible? With a sound, like bat. The sound comes out here in the nose, like a click. Yes, here is my resting place. You know, my, my dog is resting here. I lost him for six months. Oh, uh, yeah? And my grandkids sent me this. Mm. because they pitied his grandfather. And then he keeps you company. You know, it's a very good dog. He's so quiet. <laughs> How many kids do you have? Two alive. Okay. Two gone. Ah. So, you know, uh, if you... Uh, yes, I lost my oldest uh, boy in suicide. That was a big uh, le lecture. But then I changed all my life. But it took time. Mm -hmm. And then I discovered completely another world. Why do you think your, your son got uh, depression? Uh, it's heritated uh, for a, at last maybe 12 generations. My father lost his uh, brother and they before him. Always for depression. Yeah, it's nothing else. You cannot deal, you cannot accept the situation you have and you are not ready to deal with it. Mm. And the information in Iceland by psychology is nothing and has never been. Do you think it's related with uh, the lack of uh, sun, the weather, the Everything. Long, long winter? Also the culture in Iceland. Why? 
because the only the strongest uh, are the strongest the other are just uh, some kind of losers has always been if you are not uh, man enough you are not worth to live in a man world that has always been in Iceland you never feel alone so you learn to live alone it's only learning sometimes you want to be con collected connected with other people but then you said oh but you can choose everything you like i'm free so it's a very very privilege to be alone but you have to deal with a lot of things you know you know other people cannot fill your life that's a illusion that's a thing you sell yourself relationships or marriage are counting on that that this person will fill up your life but people are not taught about anything like this you have to learn it by self and you do, do a lot of mistake on the way so you f you think that loneliness is necessary to no loneliness is only here inside you are your master over your mind so you have to uh, rule you have to take the rule over the automatic thinking who goes on in the head oh i'm a loser i feel so bad oh then you are what you think not what other things you it seems like you had a, a very tough life now you live isolated let's say from from the world <laughs> but you look you seem like a satisfied man a yeah, happy man i would I like to understand how you are happy the secret is, why do I have a dog? It's part of the loneliness, definitely, but the first and last, I have a dog, because the dogs live very special life. They live always in the now. And when you are depressed, you need to understand when you are living in the future, or past, or now. And for the people who are depressed, they need to live in the now. And the talks always live in the now. He is never in the past or in the future. Live for the day to day. Because he never comes back. That makes you happy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. It was a long, uh, it was a long chat, but... Yeah, it was a, it was a four hour <laughs> speak. But you know, I have uh, made it uh, a few times. Thank you so much. But you know, for all of us, our duty is only one, trying to make the world better. Because it's so necessary. I always thought it took courage to be alone because you have to be with yourself and you have to come to terms with your demons. Here in Iceland, in the majestic silence of these pristine lands, Often there is no choice of being alone or with others and your thoughts make themselves known. Being overwhelmed by them is an even more real danger. However, through this intimate contact with nature and animals, there are people like Free Willy who have seized an invaluable opportunity to learn how to manage and tame these thoughts. How? Approaching them in the only dimension that nature contemplates, the present moment, the here and now. According to him, Learning to manage thoughts in this way is crucial to remain on the path to happiness. I agree. In fact, I think it's really one of modern man's greatest challenges. Learning to be in nature's time. The present time. The only time that really matters. The only time in which we can perform the actions that, day by day, can make our world a better place. A place to feel good. Today and right now. <laughs>